uh, might be away for a while. Uh, other thing uh, that, that is in the news is that Colabra now reaches 10 years old. I've been working five years for Colabra. They've been sponsored for six years now at the Dreamer Conference. So bravo to Colabra. Um, what we're going to talk about, we have only have three points in fact. So um, basically the, we'll look at exactly what is the allocation query, how it's built, what you find in it, what you can configure, uh, and, and how the mechanism to do this allocation query work. Um, then we'll go to the element side, base classes, what are the concept that has been designed to, to help you develop allocation query. And finally, the, the pitfalls, the things that, the, 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 the actual issue you might uh, encounter while you develop an allocation query for your element. Obviously, the allocation uh, query mechanism is there to help you use specialized memory to reach a zero copy path. If you don't implement allocation query, don't expect a zero copy path. That is very important. So, what is the allocation query? So, the allocation query is a mechanism. It's a query. So, it's uh, something you call. You, it's a. It's an object that you create from one element upstream the pipeline, and that you actually uh, send downstream the pipeline. And most often, it's not a rule. It gets filled by elements when it comes back. So. The query will actually travel from, can I get a cursor there? Yeah. It will travel from here, go to the filter. Here it would be a pass-through filter or a filter that do in-place transformation that is not allocating. Yeah, otherwise, it would be the, the actual receiver of the query. So it will just pass the, the query to the receiver. Then the receiver will fill the query. It will come back to the filter who, will, who might do some changes or not. If it's pass-through, it's not going to do that. And then the emitter will get the actual result of the query, which is all the information that uh, that specify what element, what the element down the, the pipeline wants as an alloc an, alloc an allocation. Um, one important thing: this is a special query. This query is serialized. So, what the serialized query is is that your query will flow. Will, will actually never go ahead of any buffers. So if you have a queuing element with buffers, it will always stay behind the buffers. So it will actually wait for the, this element to be drained before the, uh, the, the, the actual query will be passed to the next element. Hello there. <laughs> so what does that mean? It means that after running an allocation query, you effectively have a drain pipeline. So you actually wait for all the buffer to be treated. Um, it's an expensive query to do. So you shouldn't do random allocation query just because you can. It, it takes time, it's expensive, and it actually drains your pipeline. It could actually create a gap in your playback because you need to refill all the buffers you're late after an allocation query. The allocation query itself, uh, it's mostly a, a mini object. It contains a structure. And in the structure, we will store uh, three arrays. So there's an array of allocation, allocator and allocation parameters, an array of pools that contains buffer size, the amount of buffers, the minimum, the maximum, and all this information. And there's also the metadata that we will describe uh, later. Let's start with there. So the first array is an array of possible, well, usable allocator. And for each allocator comes what we call the allocation parameters. The parameters are, there's three parameters in fact. The prefix, which is the amount of padding you want before your data. The padding, which is the amount of padding you want after your data. And the alignment. Uh, the alignment is, uh, uh, is the is an information about the about the pointer that I'm going to give you. So the 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 multiple the, your pointer sh might need to be a multiple of something, usually a multiple of four, 
And, and this depends on the algorithm, on the instruction set that you're going to use. Uh, as an example, libav requires 16 uh, bits alignment, uh, 16 bytes alignment, in fact, because they use, uh, they use algorithm where they prefetch 16 bytes without ever caring, so they would overflow your buffer if you don't have this alignment. Take note, in GStreamer, alignment are expressed in terms of a mask. So let's say you want uh, you want this alignment where uh, that, that would be on value 15, uh, 16 here with 4 byte. <coughs> well, the value that we'll use to express the alignment in GStreamer will be 15. So only once, like this one. Why? This is because it can be used as a mask to, to check the alignment very quickly. And there is mathematical operation that we use there too. But I don't remember the detail. Wim can explain if you want to. He designed that just five years ago. <laughs> you should remember it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the, just take note that the alignment in GStreamer is 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 a mask. So it's basically the value you want minus one. The second array is actually the array of pools. So a, a pool, a buffer pool, is simply a cache of buffer with memory in it. So in GStreamer we have buffers and in buffers we put memory and the memory is the object <laughs> holding the actual data and the memory need to be locked in, a, in, in well mapped in order to uh, access the data so in this array you ask for a pool you specify a minimum a maximum and a size of buffer because in a buffer pool every buffer are of the same size most of the time well, there's a mechanism to do it differently, but it's not used in GStreamer right now. Um, very specifically to the minimum, it's important to understand that this minimum is not necessarily the minimum of the pool. It's the minimum of buffer that your, your pipeline needs. If you go lower than this minimum, the side effect is that your pipeline may fail if there's no way to allocate. So let's say I have minimum equal to maximum, of two, but I needed three buffers to operate. My pipeline was just tall. There's no error, no indication. There's no way to know. It will stop working. So you need to respect this value. And the minimum is not relative to the current buffer pool. It's something that filters could increase because you need, they need a, a certain observation. So we'll take a bit more. Well, the maximum is always pretty much specific to that pool. So in the array, you'll find different maxima, and they're, they're very specific. There's pool that can allocate memory, like a virtual allocator. Maximum can be set to minus one. This is a special value to say there's no limit. And the size is, is something that is uh, going to be the same across the array most of the time, except for padding, maybe. But it's not used for that anywhere right now. Um, <coughs> and this is the size according to the format that you're negotiating. The third array is actually an expansion point. So to GStreamer to buffer, you can attach something that is called a GST meta. So that's the base class. You can create more metas. And these metas will, will help carrying more information. As an example, the video meta is used to carry the stride and the offset of your memory when it comes time to actually map it and represent it as, uh, as video planes. You see, if you have only one plane, it's much easier, but we're not all doing graphics, so we have multiple planes. Uh, there's also the composition of early meta uh, that is there. Though, if you look at that, the composition of early meta is a meta that can transport another buffer on to be rendered on top of the current buffer. So... This composition of early meta is a bit special. It has to be negotiated because if you don't support it and there's a meta that passed by and you just ignore it, there's a piece of information that will go away. So your overlay won't be on the screen where it's supposed to be. So there's special care about, uh, about these. So that's why you'll find the composition of early meta in the caps feature because if you don't negotiate it, and you, have a, you put an element that don't support it in the middle, it, you, it won't notice. It will just drop it, and your rendering won't be correct. And finally, you can create your own meta for your own needs. Uh, 
an example, I know there is metas in, in, in uh, GES, the GST editing services, because they needed it. And this is exactly what it's used for. They had to transport certain information downstream the pipeline. So they just attach their meta with their own information and let it go through. And if needed, they could actually negotiate that meta, the use of that meta. There. Now, so that was for the uh, allocation query itself, what you store in the allocation query and what you actually retrieve when you run an allocation query. This has to be used inside the elements. So across uh, the base classes, we created a, a certain concept so we could actually speak about it and understand ourselves. So same, pi same pipeline here, an emitter, a pass-through filter, and a receiver. So the receiver will propose an allocation. So, so it will be the first one to receive the allocation, the, the empty allocation query, and it will fill its information. It's really the easiest task because you know, you, you, you know how to allocate buffers for your needs. So you create a buffer pool, you set the alignment, the number you need for yourself, and then uh, the rest of the pipeline will add more, and the maximum that your, your allocator or your buffer pool can handle. So in base classes, you'll find this as the method called propose allocation. And usually if you look at the example, this is quite simple to implement. In filters, there's only one base class right now that is not always used, but that will give you some help, some method. But you have the ability to transform the query. So transformation can be uh, about filtering the methods, removing them because you don't support them. So upstream won't see it, and it will not activate them. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that metas can be activated on the pool also, depending on what they are. It, it, you need to know what, what, what this meta is. But they can also try and, and increase, actually, the minimum number of buffers in the pools array. This is needed for elements that need uh, observation. Uh, such element is known, there's one that is called video rate. So video rate is an element that will try to produce from a, a varying rate source, it will try to produce a fixed rate result by copying buffers. But to take care of the right decision, you need the previous buffer and the current buffer. So it's not inducing latency, in the, because when it receives the first buffer, it will just let it go. It's, it's like a, a no-op, so it's, it doesn't have latency, but it still keep a reference, so it will keep a buffer. And it means that overall in your pipeline, you have more and more buffer to be allocated. So because of that, you need to increase the minimum number of buffers. The benefit is that as soon as the pipeline will start streaming, all those buffers will be pre-allocated. So you, you most likely won't have to allocate at running time when the pipeline is running. And then you're, you're sure that your pipeline will never stall because you're too low in buffers. And finally, you got the emitter, which, which will implement, which will make the decision. So out of these three array, <coughs> it will iterate and find what is the best possible uh, set of metas, allocators, and pool to actually <coughs> do that job. And this is actually really hard. It's a case by case. If you have to implement a decide allocation query, make sure you, you actually understand uh, the code you are producing because and that make sure that you run it through uh, many possibilities in your mind for your use case because it's very easy to get wrong it works at first and and when you go into production it blows up in corner cases it hangs it so, so it can have a very very bad effect on your pipeline so be aware also a good habit you just copy paste a piece of code that already exists you start modifying it, you say, oh, it's done, and, and actually you realize that all this code is useless because it's not for your use case. This is the thing that is the most case by case in GStreamer, even though there's probably few helpers that we could eventually add in the future to, to help people do that. Speaking of which, um, the 
allocation query also comes with few pitfalls and, and we didn't really know when we started. So it's a very flexible, very free form way of doing the allocation. It's quite complete, in fact. So nothing really to be added, but there's few pitfalls. Um, one of the things that we discovered recently, and we're still trying to see if we could work around it, is that it doesn't work if you actually if you didn't do the, the, the if you didn't negotiate the format before you try to, to do the allocation. So for some people it seems like evident that you need a format to know how to allocate. But in other cases you can realize that you would want to query for different format what would be the allocation in order to make a better allocation. But the problem is with those pass through filters. Because to be able to reply to the allocation query, they need to figure out if they're going to be passed through or not. And the only the only way right now to figure out if you're going to be passed through or not, let's say video convert, is to check your input caps, check your output caps, and check if they match. If they match, I'm going to be passed through. And if I'm passed through, I'm going to let everything that comes from the alloc the, the proposed allocation from the receiver, from the receiver, from the the sync actually, to, to let it through because I'm passed through. I'm not changing anything. But if I'm not, I need to filter and remove stuff. And there's, there's no way to, to, to represent this duality. Um, one of the ideas we have to eventually maybe work around that would be to kind of uh, split the, the set format into the, to split the part that decide between pass through and not pass through from the set format operation of a base transform and make, make that a virtual function so we could eventually work around that. But we're worried because there's, a, there's still quite a, a cost of doing allocation query. But if you did one allocation query and then you do three more allocation query, there's no more cost anymore. It's a one-time cost. As soon as you drain your pipeline, it's drained. And I say pipeline here, but you don't really drain the pipeline. You, you drain the part between two allocation so there's an element that will want buffers and an element that will allocate and you only drain that part. So that's a common mistake. Another thing that was very common, it was, that was actually funny. I was walking the street at the beginning, beginning of the, the week and just chatting like this and suddenly, I forgot his name, I don't know if he's here. Oh, there you go. Suddenly I got told, yeah, I started using T in my pipeline to actually multiplex my data, which is the thing to do. And performance went down. And well, that's one of the known issue with, with with T is that T would need to be able to figure out and aggregate the proposed allocation. So every proposal would need to be aggregated. And that's something we didn't really design. If you look in, 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 in GStreamer docs design, you won't find any technique. But it should be possible. And uh, we, we have fair confidence that in the future we should be able to implement uh, a proposed allocation aggregation in order to be able to, let's say you have two compatible syncs. Let's say you have GL syncs twice after a multiplexing. You could actually receive one of the two GL buffer pool and allocate from these GL buffer pool and gain from the extra performance of using that. Or uh, other. Yes? That is likely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, if a new thing that, that is added, that, that's my <coughs> point so far on that thing. Oh, I'll need to repeat. So the, the, the point is that the difficulty is, let's say I have those two, I negotiate, that's fine, I do it, the aggregation, it works. And then I request a new pad on the T. So at this point, uh, I think the, to me, the, the, the solution is that it's a bit like um, when, you, when we used to do mixing, when we do the audio mixing. So to me, something was decided. And if what we added is not compatible, we should error out. And this can be done by the T by running an allocation query, doing the intersection with what was uh, lately negotiated, and see if that's usable. 
But in practice, in practice, I don't know if it's really doable because the allocation query, uh, unlike CAPS, actually holds um, it holds pointer on on real objects, which holds pointer on memory. So it might be risky to just cache uh, a query there. Though so saying that, base transform is caching the query also, and it seems to work right now. So there's something usable there. In the <laughs> Uh, more warnings. I'm not going through all the pitfalls, but um, one thing you cannot really do is to expose an allocator that does not allocate. Uh, we've had long discussion recently. It's a technique that was used by Intel to try and negotiate the DMA, uh, not Intel, by uh, Linaro, to try and negotiate the DMA buff actually through the allocation query. And their idea was to take the DMA buff allocator, which in fact is just a helper to wrap a DMA buff into a GST memory, so there's no allocation function, and they would put it there. The problem is that if you have very generic code, it will grab an allocator, grab a pool, put them together, and let's say the pool is video pool, you'll say, ooh, an allocator, I'll use it. And then first time you try to allocate a buffer, it will error out at runtime. And runtime errors for things that you could fail earlier is really not wanted in GStreamer because otherwise you cannot do any type of auto plugging. So fail first, we might be able to work around it to fall back. But if you fail at runtime, it's too late. Um, something that we need not to forget and that was actually fixed in between 1.2 and 1.4 is that set config as a Boolean return value. And this Boolean actually means something. It was always documented, not always implemented. But now it's, it, there's actually a few pools that when you do set config, it will return false. What does it mean? It doesn't mean it failed. It just means that the configuration that you asked is not going to be applied as is. There are some changes that, uh, that might have been made. So it's up to the plugin to reread this configuration and validate the items that you actually care about to make sure it's still compatible. So the minimum buffer could have been raised, the maximum buffer could have been lowered. Uh, there's various things that could have changed. And it's, it's to, the, it's to the, the, the side allocation to the plugin role to actually verify that. So, and ignoring set config is very risky because maybe the feature you wanted is not there. And you could have kept running by using a different pool in the array because there's an array you need to iterate over the array. Uh, last thing, and um, that's something that only got fixed mostly in 1.6. Don't propose an active buffer pool because buffer pools are not really shareable. I'll just come back to one of my drawing here. This one should do. So let's say I have an element here and my pipeline is running and this element is passed through. It means that my receiver pool might be used by the emitter. So let's say it is used by the emitter here. So the, the source, in fact. I should have used source and sync. I don't know why. I, you know. So let's say the sync is using it. At some point, my pass through limit decide that it's not pass through anymore. So application change a property, and it needs to allocate buffer. So before the emitter is done, the, the filter will end up requesting an allocation from the receiver. If the receiver resend the same buffer pool again, well, at first it will work because here it will configure something which is most likely compatible. It will activate it. Fine. Set active true on a set active true. Uh, buffer pool works. So it will work. But as soon as the buffer will be fully drained here, there might be a renegotiation happening here. So before uh, doing the allocation query, the source will actually deactivate its old pool because it was his own. He activated it, so it's normal that he thinks that he needs to deactivate it. And by deactivating the pool, the pool will become flushing. So eventually the, the filter will try to allocate a buffer, will receive flow flushing. And flow flushing is not an error in GStreamer. It's, it's a just a step to turn down the, the threads. So it will actually return flow flushing and then the source thread will stop. There's still no error, no warning, no, nothing is wrong happening. 
and, every, and your pipeline will just stop. This will stop working. Nothing's going on. So that's the effect of sharing the same buffer pool in a pipeline. And it only happens if a renegotiation happens as a, at, at a specific point in time. So you have to be very careful. And when that happens, because it happens from time to time, when you have this bug, it's very hard to figure out because there's no sign. You have no more thread running. So, But yeah, if you ever see all threads of Gstreamer going away all, all at the same time, and you didn't do anything, you didn't do a flush or anything, you can start thinking about something returning GST flow flushing in your pipeline. So ah, that's pretty good. So we still have five minutes for questions. So is there any questions? Oh, yeah. It's a good question. So the question is, uh, if you had to share a buffer pool, what you would you do instead? So maybe I should say, uh, what is broken right now in GStreamer? It's actually the company that I maintain. is the V4L sync element. So the V4L sync element always propose the same pool. Because right now, all the allocation of pools and the activation of pools is done inside the buffer pool object. So in V4L, what we'll try to do, and I think it's going to work, is just we already created an allocator specialized for V4L. And we'll, we'll move pretty much all the code that was dealing with uh, activating the stream, activating the buffers, allocating the buffers, uh, to, uh, to the allocator. So everything will be allocated there. We'll add maybe an extra buffer so we can have enough buffers to do the renegotiation. And then we'll be able to simply allocate a dummier uh, buffer pool that will use that allocator to allocate the buffers. So the buffer pool in V4L will only have to get the memory from V4L, which is actually an array of buffers, of planes, wrap it into a GST, well, wrap it, it will receive GST memory from the allocator, and wrap it into a GST buffer, add whatever metas that is needed. Uh, there's a proposal for V4L metas, so maybe there will be a, a V4L specific meta in the future, I don't know. And, and then, then it's ready and then return it. And then cache these buffers until the, the buffer will get deactivated and then you send back everything to the allocator. The allocator is quite important because you're not guaranteed that a buffer will always come back to your buffer pool. The buffer could have been dirtied, more memory could have been added, memory could have been replaced or, or removed. So if that happens, there's a mecha there's mechanism in GStreamer to detect it. And in this case, the pool will the, 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 the buffer will be discarded and returned to the allocator. So that's why, in general, you need an allocator. Especially if you have fixed amount of memory, like before. Yeah. So that's that's the the biggest solution. Um, the bug was also present in XV image sync, X image sync, GL image sync, and all the GL ish sync. And because they all copy pasted the code from XV image sync, <laughs> and they had absolutely no reason. None of these implementation need to reuse their or cache their buffer pool there's just no need for it in this infrastructure because you can allocate buffers, so you can allocate new ones. More questions? Yep. Later? Later? Okay, we still have time. <laughs> okay. Well then, thank you very much for listening and have good coding. <laughs>